Ladies and gentlemen, the Newton Nomadic Theater presents Story Slam. This happened before GPS, before Woodstock, <laughs> a lot of other things. I was uh, traveling for eight months, going, coming back around from around the world, and I was in La Hinch, Ireland. It was 19, September 1964, and I was this young thing looking, and a young man came up to me, younger than me, quite a bit younger than me, and said, he had an idea, would I like to go to Listoon Varno with him? And I said, Listoon what? And he explained that it was better than all the other festivals because there were bands with the best bands everywhere. And uh, I didn't know quite how I would go there because he said he would not have, he didn't have a car. And I said, well, thank you, but I don't really go other places, go places with people I don't know in foreign countries. <laughs> and, um, he disappeared and he came back a few minutes later with another man, much older. Both of them were strange. They were both wearing suits and everybody else was wearing golf clothes. And uh, we went to look, they, they, I looked at the car and I said, oh my goodness, that's a rather small car. And I thought the two men would want to sit in front and I started crawling into the back, and as soon as I got there, here was the young man sitting, sitting next to me. And uh, off we went, and pretty soon there was a hand, and then another hand, and I began getting tired of it, and I said, stop the car, I want to get out, I'm going to walk home. And I got out of the car, and it was so pitch black, and there weren't any farmhouses anywhere around there, and I said, all right, I'll come with you. <laughs> and the, and the, the, man, the older man in the front seat said, it's going to be much safer up here. So I sat next to him, and it was maybe five, ten, it's only seven miles to Liston Varna. So it's about five minutes, ten minutes. I feel a hand on my knee, and I said, let us me just get out, and I'll hitchhike home. And he said, but we're almost there, just over here. And we went over the crest of the hill. And there in this valley was this great big resort hotel. It was square and ungainly and four stories high. And every window, which seemed to be dozens and dozens of windows, every single window was ablaze with light. And the whole hotel was responding to the music of these great bands, and it seemed as if it was just dancing round in the valley, this whole great big hotel. Well, we drove down the hill, and the noise was incredible. You couldn't even think. And I slipped away from those two rogues, and I got to the front of the hotel, and I saw that there was this screened-in porch, and there were just a few people there. The whole point was a place where you could talk to people because you couldn't talk anyplace else. Everybody had to yell just to be heard over the music. And so I talked to this person and that group and this person. And I was looking for somebody who was going back to La Inch. And nobody was going back that way. And I was feeling a little stumped. And I saw a priest sitting along on the, one of these um, wicker chairs with fancy cars, you know, flowered car seats or you know seats in the in the uh, middle of this the, all the wicker chairs were kind of bottomless so they kept putting pillows into them in any case i thought of the young man that i had met in japan who had said that he was walking he was from france he had been walking around the world the other way and he said if i was ever in trouble i should talk to a, a catholic priest and they would help me. And I said, but I'm not a Catholic. Why would they do that? And he said, well, you don't have to be. He said, it's their job to do the right thing and to help people <laughs> when they're in trouble. And so I moved to a chair closer to the priest. And pretty soon there was people leaving and other people going. And we were about the only two people left at the moment. And I said, um, 
Well, we started to talk. We introduced ourselves. His name was Father Power. And uh, he was, he had a parish of his own somewhere in the north of England, a town called Bradford. And uh, he's, I, explained, I told him who I was and where I was going. And he started to ask, he asked me my age and my marital status. And I'm thinking, what is this? And all of a sudden, he asked me if I was a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, I am interested in why you wanted to ask me that. And he said, well, you see, a girl's virginity is the basis for her reputation. And I hope you're saving yours for, because you want to be able to get married to a man who really wants a girl with a good reputation. And I thought, well, this is now or never. And I asked him if I could get a ride back to La Hinch when he was at the end of his evening. And he said, of course. And it wasn't too long before we started out. He said, let's go. And his car was in the parking lot. We had to go through the bar room. And it was just very crowded. And I... Oh. <laughs> it was very crowded. And I felt a pinch on my bottom. And I looked around. But I didn't seem to, it, the priest was right behind me. But I didn't think the priest would be doing something like that. And we got outside, we got into his car, he opened the door for me. He was not driving over, all over the road, like the two rogues had been driving. And I, I thought, well, this is a real gentleman. And he drove me back to La Hinge. And it was a wide front, you know, the front of the hotel was the only place in town that looked even vaguely open, but there was only one light in the whole town. And he drove in a U-turn, and he pulled up in front of the hotel. And then the light went out in the hotel. And suddenly, he slipped an arm around one side of me, and with his arm, he was taking me down backwards on the front seat, and right over the stick shift. And I said, Father Power, what will the bishop say when I write him about this up there, what is it, Bradford, England? <laughs> and he sat up straight, and he opened his door, and he walked around the car, and he opened up my side, and he escorted me to the front door of the hotel. And if anyone were watching, they would see that this was a paragon of virtue of a man of a cloth saving a poor virginal girl from the United States. <laughs>